Hey everybody, it's me, Pam Dragon Moon Creations. Welcome back to my channel. I already started this video once and accidentally turned my camera off. <laughs> it's weird because I started out the other video. Well, if my camera accidentally turns off, I don't know, if you press a button or something on the thing, it just... the phone. Anyway, I was going to talk to you a little bit while I work on this project. Um, you've seen this done. Take a cardboard box, cover it with book paper, you know, after you put the separations in it. Um, I was waiting for the right box, and, uh, I ordered some Chewy, uh, food, food from Chewy, and it came in, this was covered up with these box, with two of them, you know, because I ordered two cases of canned cat food, but it's a really nice, sturdy box, you know, and so I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I finally, a box finally fell in my lap. I'm going to do it. And uh, my separate, my, these are, I don't know, the, what I use for the dividers. I don't know why I keep separation. I don't know why I keep saying that. The dividers I used, uh, some of them are chipboard, and then some of them were a piece of chip, thick chipboard that came in a package or something. So I'm reusing a lot of stuff. The glue I'm using, I had bought this uh, one year at Walmart. It was um, back to school, and it was the Play-Doh brand glue, and it was 25 cents a bottle, and I bought a whole little case of it. It was like almost 12 bottles, you know, like six, four dollars maybe. I can't do math. That's why I have all my measuring tools. But I water it down a little bit. So I didn't see any reason to, when you're gluing this you know, book paper to cardboard, basically. I didn't see any reason to use uh, Mod Podge or, or, you know, any decoupage stuff. Um, I mean, basically, de decoupage is like watered-down glue, in my opinion. But this seems to be working really well. It's a little wet, but in, when it dries, it, you know, it, it, it flattens out, and it looks really good. It's, and it's really hard, and it's, like I said, it seems to be working okay. Anyway, I was going to do this while I talk to you about my skunk thing. I don't even know if I want to talk about skunk thing, but um, it was it was it was it was just I've been fighting a skunk for like two months, and we've had two that I know of. We've had two, and we trapped one and took it away but the thing it was doing really that was um really that was making me so upset and angry is the fact that it's tearing up underneath of our house it's tearing up it it's tearing insulation down and so i uh i've been fighting this thing i've been it i would block a hole um let's say i've poured 120 pounds of, of sack creek, quick creek, whatever you want to call it, and in holes, and it would just dig another hole beside where I had just poured concrete. I know one at one place it 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 did do that. It dug. It, it was under the deck, and I poured concrete under there, and then it was, uh, and then it dug a hole beside the uh, where I just poured concrete, and. So I, I poured concrete in that hole and then it <laughs> and then it literally dug another hole right beside where I had just poured that concrete. So my uh I I I I have just I literally had reached the end of my rope, you know, and this was like during garden season and you know, me trying to get the garden done. We ended up catching that. We could not get any help from uh, the state uh, Department of Natural Resources. Could not get it. They don't do that. They don't help you. And um, we did, we could not get any help. And, uh, and we have a dog catcher in this town that's called Animal Control, but I don't think you should be called Animal Control if all you do is catch dogs. So, uh, we trapped it, which the DNR said we had to have a, I don't know if I told you all that, we had to have a, uh, 
a permit to trap even on our own property, even though they wouldn't help us, that we weren't allowed to trap without a permit from them. And I basically told them to go to hell. I told I said, I said, wait, you, you don't want to come and trap on our property, but you're going to charge us to trap on our own property. She said, yeah. And I said, that doesn't work for me. And I hung up on her. So, um, anyway, <laughs> we ended up trapping a live skunk, literally. At the time, we didn't really know because we'd had groundhogs dig under our house before. And I don't know why it's our house. None of our neighbors seem to have this pesky problem. And uh, we thought when we trapped it, we were going to be trapping a groundhog. You know, that's not how it worked out for us. So anyway, we watched the YouTube video of how you put, I think I told you all this story of how you put the tarp over it, you know, so you don't agitate it and, and, uh, um, you know, so it doesn't spray. Okay. First one. Okay. The problem continued even after we took, we trapped that skunk and took it away. And I said, you know, and it, again, with the tearing up of the insulation under our house, you know, it was tearing up the insulation under the house and, uh, just, it was just about to ruin uh, under our insulation. Basically, we have huge gaps in our insulation under our house. So anyway, we uh, we tried everything. We tried mothballs. I ruined my house for probably two weeks, maybe three, because the smell. I didn't put mothballs under the house because I knew better than that. But the skunk dragged the mothballs. We, yes, we got another skunk after we trapped one and took it away. It 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 decided to take the mothball bag. They come in sachets. I, I don't know if you've bought mothballs, box of mothballs. Um, you know, they come in like bags, three bags, um, like 20 or 30 mothballs in a bag. So I had put the bag right at the opening on the outside. And that was before I actually poured concrete and it dragged it under my house. It, dra it dragged it just right in the opening under the house. And uh, my house smelled like mothballs. It was awful. My daughter came over and she said, that it, gosh, mom, that, that, that's burning my throat. And she became uh, concerned for our health. And um, if you wonder what I'm doing, I've got my pieces. i got a bunch of the, the book pages all torn up into little pieces probably better if I put them over here because that way I can see them better. So anyway, uh, she became concerned for our health, she said, and uh, I even called in somebody and after I, th and then I, you know, I had to crawl under the house and get it. It was not a good experience. Our house is very low. I'm claustrophobic. And, uh, Anyway, I had to crawl under and get the bag, and then it's the smell lingered because it was in in uh, in the soil because we have a an earthen earthen basement, and uh, so I called in actually professionals. I called professionals to come and see if they could do something about the smell. And when he went and they came, I haven't got the bill from them yet because it was one hundred and fifty dollars. And he said, uh, I don't know what to do, but I still, ha I haven't got the bill from them. And I'm kind of wondering about that, if I need to call them or if no news is good news. So, um, okay, where was I? So any, in the meantime, you know. I leave my basement door open, trying to get fresh air in and all that stuff. Well, in the meantime, our yard is getting torn up from the skunk digging for grubs. <laughs> it's just, it was just on and on and on and 
and, you know, just one thing after another. I mean, it just kept going on. I, I wasn't getting a break from, from having the yard tore up, the insulation torn, um, uh, we tried every, we tried something, it's called, um, uh, repels all from, um, tractor supply and we, we did, we tried everything, uh, nothing. And then all of a sudden, um, it stopped. There was no, there was no more, uh, holes in the yard. So I thought, well, maybe it's gone. So I had, I had actually went and bought cap blocks, you know, they're like four by four by eight by 16, like half of a, a concrete block. And, um, I bought those and had, oh, because it, oh, the last thing it did was dug a hole behind the greenhouse. Behind the greenhouse now. Okay. Not into the greenhouse, behind it. So I put cap blocks, as many as I could. My greenhouse is almost up against my house. You've seen the video, maybe. And, um, so it's like, okay, maybe that'll do it, you know, stop it from, didn't, it, it didn't, it didn't stop it. <clears throat> it did not stop it. Uh, I, you know, my, my sequence of events is kind of out of sync because it, I have been so distraught over this whole thing. Uh, anyway, it ended up, we ended up have. I said, well, I guess we're going to have to, since the yard wasn't getting torn up, I literally thought that we might have a groundhog again. Maybe it was opportunistic. You know, there was already holes dug under the house or something. I don't know. But, uh, every time, but every time I plugged a hole, a new one came there. Was, it was, there was no way it was keeping it out. And everyone said, well, maybe it's a female skunk and she laid babies and something's coming back. And I said, well, no, the guy that came to see where, if he could do anything about the smell, which, nope, nothing he could do. He was back in under there crawling around with uh, a flashlight. And uh, he kept saying, I don't, I don't see anything. He said, I see where your insulation is torn down. He said, but I don't see any animals. I said, okay. We saw evidence. We saw poo. And, uh, so, um, what happened was we did have another skunk. It had dug in around my, on the other side of the house. It had gone through where our gas line going into the house. So we did have another skunk. But it was, apparently it wasn't feeding in our yard. It, they dig up grubs, so they dig holes all over your yard. It was just, it was just a... It was a mess, and um, anyway, I, I plugged up another hole. I mean, I I really did it. I mean, I plugged up, plugged it up good. I put cat blocks over it. I put concrete in the hole, and that it had dug. And uh, I uh, I thought I I thought I had it. Uh, well, I didn't have it. It dug in under. It dug in the original hole behind the greenhouse. And it dug all the way through to the greenhouse before it had only gone behind. It dug all the way through the greenhouse and dug under my greenhouse door when it couldn't get through on the other side. It dug through my the greenhouse door. Didn't break anything. It's not like it dug, uh, you know... It didn't, you know, like dig through the plastic, the door, but it, it, it dug under the door and I have rocks in front of my greenhouse. So that was a pretty good feat, you know, for it to do that. Oh crap. I'm, not, I'm making a mess of this. So anyway, I said, told my husband, I said, if it's a skunk, if it's a groundhog, whatever it is, we're going to have to trap it. Again, how, how long am I? Oh, yeah, I'm 14 minutes. So we're going to have to trap. And I, we were hoping, really hoping really hard that it was a groundhog. And I went out the next morning, and I had trapped the biggest skunk I had ever seen in my life. 
And by the weight of it, it must have weighed. It must have weighed 10 pounds, 10, 12 pounds. So anyway, <laughs> I... Uh, <clears throat> I went in and told my husband the bad news, and he said, you're kidding, and I said, I am not kidding you, and uh, kind of one of those, well, what do we do now things, because, you know, I wasn't expecting it to be a, I wasn't expecting it to be a, a skunk, and uh, so anyway, I said, well, you put the tarp over the last one, because they say if you put a tarp over it, you know, it, may, it doesn't feel as threatened and everything. Well, um, my skunk was going to be threatened no matter what, because I did it. It was in the greenhouse. My husband is not, you know, very balanced on his feet. You know, he's off balance because of the knee surgeries and all that. And... I said, well, it was a tight fit through, you know, not the best place to trap a skunk is inside of a greenhouse with a narrow door. So, what we did was, what I did <laughs> was, um, I got the tarp, because we had the tarp already, because we cut a hole and you slid a hole so you can reach in the trap, you know, the live trap handle and pull it up. So... I, he saw me coming. I know he did. And I'm calling it a he because it was extremely agitated and aggressive. But, you know, couldn't leave it in there until it died. I, even if, you know, that does sound really cruel, uh, it, the thought did cross my mind. You must take into consideration my mental state at this point. I had... I was holding on to a very, you know, I think I said this before, it was a very, very end of my rope, and I had lost my grip, and I was free-falling at this point. Okay. So, anyway, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, was walking towards it, you know, you put the tarp up in front of you, so in case you do get sprayed. My husband, the last one we trapped, he didn't get sprayed. It, the, 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 um, the skunk was very cooperative, actually. And, uh, he did not get sprayed. And, uh, was walking towards it, and I had just dropped the tarp on to the top of the cage. Dropped it on. It wasn't all the way covered. And I heard the cage start to rattle. And I knew that was a bad sign. Because they say that a skunk will give you several warnings. One of them is stomping its feet. And I'm thinking, it immediately crossed my mind. The skunk is stomping its feet and it's about to spray. And I was right. It it uh, <clears throat> a spray and uh, luckily I mean I heard it hit the tarp that I was holding I had let go by that time I had already let go of the tarp and uh, and backed away but I heard it hit and I I, you know, because it was like, it would be like a, a taking a spray bottle on, you know, stream and spraying it towards something, in the, spraying it on something plastic. That's what it sounded like, which is exactly what it was. That's exactly what he did. I'm saying he, because like I said, it was agitated and aggressive. It could have been a female, but um, like I said, there was nothing under the, under the house that, that the guy that came to check, you know, to see the, if, about the smell, the, he said he didn't see anything under there. So, um, okay, the skunk had sprayed. I had been within three feet of it, and I, uh, I sniffed, and I said, yep, it's sprayed. So I, um, 
went in the house, told my husband, I said, yeah, it's, it, he, he sprayed. He said, did he get you? And I said, no, but I can smell skunk. Well, I didn't know that stuff hangs like a, like a mist. <laughs> it, it hangs like a mist and, um, I had gotten misted. <laughs> so I was, I had a little, it was on my clothes. I could smell it on my clothes. But, you know, I was wearing my gardening clothes. It wasn't like I was wearing my Sunday best. So I had to take all that off, you know, and I put it in the washing machine right away. Took two washings. But then I had, but um, actually I didn't do it right away because I, um, I had to go back out and finish the job. I had to get it, I had to get the, I had to get it covered. So, um, I did that. I went back out uh, after I thought it had, maybe had calmed down, and um, I finished the job, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. I covered the skunk and I got it out of the greenhouse. Now, the, a skunk can spray up to six times. It didn't, it didn't spray me again. It didn't, you know, just spray while I, ha I was dealing with it. My husband said it sprayed in the truck because my husband had to come out. I said, I've done my job. It's covered. It's you now. So he went, he had to go out and get it and um, put it in his truck and take it away. And I said, did it spray? He said, yeah, it sprayed while it was in the back of the truck. He said, but the scariest part was when I had to release the door to let it go. <laughs> Because it's a live trap. We don't kill it. He takes it out to like boat access to the lake. And uh, he said, but it, he said, that was the scary part was, was getting the, the trap door open and, uh, and letting the skunk out. So now it tore up the the floor of my greenhouse where it was digging through the the little mesh. It, it did a lot of damage, and uh, I have to fix that. There's more sackcrete. I have to fix the hole from the inside and in, in the in the basement crawl space basement side. And um, but then I'm hoping that maybe we're at the end of this because we've poured concrete. I put cat blocks down around the outside of the house. I've done, I've done so much to try to deter that I'm hoping that that's, that, that this will be the end of it, that this is the end of it. So that's my skunk story. And, uh, the end of the video, I'm going to continue to work on this. I just wanted to give you something to watch while I was telling my skunk story. So we have live traps, two skunks that have been under our house, you know, like luckily we trapped them on the outside of the house. So the spray was not on the inside of the house, but the hole that, that, that went from the greenhouse and under, under a cap block and back up and under our house, that hole was siphoning in the smell from the greenhouse because the greenhouse is in an enclosed space where it sprayed. It sprayed the tarp, but it ran down and ran on the, you know, on the floor. And, uh, I mean, I have a dirt floor, but I have these, these mats. I get a Dollar Tree and I put down to keep, um, weeds from growing. So I'm going to have to t replace a couple of those. I already have the replacements and, uh, uh, I have to, you know, fill in the hole on the floor of the greenhouse where it had dug, dug, uh, dug, you know, trying to get out of the cage of the trap. So that's my, my skunk saga. Not over yet. Not until I get the hole plugged, the greenhouse floor fixed, and then, um, you know, wait and see, make sure that we don't get another one. So anyway, that's my skunk story. And thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I'll show you this as I, as I, uh, maybe as I progress. I don't know. Maybe just, I might finish it. It's taken me a while because I have been involved with other things. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my skunk story. And um, I will talk to you later. Bye.